Today we're going to be talking more about our 50 pips a day strategy and the importance of timings. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Already a fairly good start to the week. Monday started off a little slow but then took off and as the session progressed and into the US session obviously there were some big moves yesterday. Pound Aussie, Pound New Zealand in particular, Pound Canadian at the end as well. Today we're going to be talking a bit more in depth about the three hour rotations of the market throughout the 24 cycle. Again we're going to go over our simple struct, our simple nine steps, a lot of questions, a ton of questions, some, some awesome feedback. Thank you, a lot of emails. I'm slowly trying to get through everybody's emails, so be patient. I will try and answer every single email and question. I'm gonna try and highlight some of these and answer some questions in the videos as we progress through. But again, focus on just constant progress. If you're losing money, stop trading and take a step back take some stress off your back and just observe the market and try to observe some of the simple behaviors that happen every single day, day in and day out. The model that we use is, is not really a system, it's based on how the market works. The highs and the lows and the numbers and the timings. If you think about it, if you're trading against algorithms, I doubt very much if there is a person in a bank desk sitting there trading himself on this time frame. Certainly the banks are executing orders for clients throughout the day on their own trading desks based on the prices they've negotiated for clients. Global e-commerce is probably the largest bulk of the 24-hour market but of course there's the the intraday market is driven and controlled largely by the institutions, the big players. And something you need to remember is that when you take a position in the market, you're not trading against me. You're getting liquidity from the other side of the, of the equation, which is your broker, who is a white label of most likely one of eight or nine banks. So when you take a position, they're able to see how many buyers and how many sellers on an aggregate level build up at these levels. And for a retail market, it's pretty obvious where stops are placed. They're always placed at highs and at lows in a large majority of the cases. If you look at these movements of 50 pip increments, that's enough to stop out most small traders. And that's really important that you remember why we work from the highs and the lows, why we work from numbers. Because when the market confirms our thesis, when they've either moved to one side of the market or the other or they've moved to one set of numbers in a 100 pip box or a 150 pip box, whatever that may be, there's a process that we follow that we look for when they tell us what they're going to do. We want to piggyback on those movements. Okay, so just a quick review. We look for structure. So we're just looking at big picture trend lines, bigger geometrical patterns, rectangles, head and shoulders. That could be accumulating over two, three days, maybe a week. We're looking for double tops, double bottoms, whether that's interday or again over a two or three day sample. We want to remember the different mark, uh, up templates where they sell it high or where they drop it down to buy it low and lift it. Monday, Tuesday, 80% of the time will often form one of the extremes for the high or the low for the week and that obviously can spill into a Wednesday. But structure, big picture, that can give us geometry for measured moves, for bigger picture targets to position ourselves maybe for a larger move or a two to three day position. I don't, very rarely do I ever stay in overnight, never on the weekends, but I will look for measured move targets for bigger structure and we're going to go over that as well in a different video. High and low of the day, the high and the low of the previous day. When the day opens, unless it's continued to trend into the close, into the next session, often we are already inside of the previous day's trading range. So those quadrants of 50 pip increments can give us a lot of information where we're at in relation to the previous day, especially if we violate or break out of one of those boundaries. We talked about markets doing one of three things. They break out, they fill more orders and they continue, which we call a trend trade. 
they will break out, pull back and reverse and go to the other side. We call that a false break reversal, which we saw last night on the pound Canadian. And we see a breakout pullback and a market go into a range bound market, which is often what we'll see on an inside day or into the close or just in a choppy sideways day, often before the day before payrolls or maybe even at the higher the low of the week on a level three trade. Then we talk about the timings, the importance of the market open and the three hour rotations. Now, we've only kind of gone over that three hour rotation, but it's important to understand that we look for that 12 candle window, the hour before the, the equity markets open, the hour of the open, and the hour after the open. That's a prime area for the market if it hasn't already moved, if it's gone into consolidation to make a move, or if it's moving to go into consolidation off the numbers or at a high and a low for us to have price confirmation with pins, hammers, engulfment patterns where the market has trapped traders and then shifting to reverse and go back to the other side or to make a move in the opposite direction. If it's a trend trade, it will break out through a level and push back into the breakout and continue that move. So these three hour rotations, we're gonna come back to this in a second. But again, round numbers, 50s and double zeros. Major pairs as well, they will all rotate off of major round numbers. And again, our 12 candle window. We use a, a, a one bar stop, a one ATR stop, whatever that is roughly in terms of the pair that you're trading, including your spread. And we look for asymmetrical risk reward with profit targets, three, four, five to one, depending on the setup. It may be uh, a double zero, a 50 pip uh, increment lot, it may be a measured move of the geometrical pattern that you're in. But definitely execute your one ATR stop, your one bar stop loss. Trade management, I've had a few uh, questions about when do you go to break even, that sort of thing. It depends, each trade scenario has its own set of circumstances that you, you need to make discretionary decisions on. I was in the trade yesterday in the pound New Zealand where it constantly came back into the range in a 50 pip trade. It went more than 50, but I was my target was 50, but there was enough movement back and forth that I was comfortable to leave my stop where it was as it progressed towards its target. It probably wouldn't have stopped me out at break even, but there was enough volatility inside of that movement on the way to its target that it potentially may have hit my break even stop loss to take me out of the market. That's me, That's the, that's the I'm comfortable to leave my stop in place as long as the trade is moving in the right direction. So those are some things that we'll go over again in some of the coming videos. And then yourself, just being prepared, being focused, and being clear on what exactly it is that you're looking for and not, and not engaging in other types of trade setups. Not doing anything that's going to be detrimental to your performance on that particular day. No self-sabotage, fear chasing poor fills, getting angry, getting frustrated, not using your stops, using too much leverage. These are all things that are very easily done in live time out of frustration or fear or revenge, all of those emotional characteristics that only you can work on yourself and that you need to identify yourself, which brings us to our last part, reviewing performance tactics, planning, preparation, daily routine, your performance in live time, improving on that, so eliminating the things that are interfering with you, getting the results that you want, and then focusing on the things that you're doing well. Simplify, you notice this is, it seems like a lot, but it's very, very simple. Very simple. We wanna get rid of everything else. I'm, I don't wanna use indicators. I don't wanna use other things that will give me analysis paralysis. I look for a couple of basic setups at the numbers or the high and the low, at the timings, or in these three hour rotations when we're at extremes, at highs and lows, into the equity opens. So master a couple of setups, keep it really simple, duplicate that, keep getting better, improving on it, and scaling it up in size. So a bit more on the rotations now. We've talked about that rollover, that initial three hour rollover, 5 p.m. New York to uh, 8 p.m. New York roughly. In that window, for me, everybody may be different, but it's difficult for me to trade at any point in there. The spreads are too wide. There's often a bit, bit of volatility, but the spreads tend to widen out quite a bit at that rollover. But when we head into that next 
window, this, this first three hours can give us some information. We talked about it being usually one of three things, a stop hunt. So the stop hunt might go, if the market had come down in the US session, they might come back up in three big bursts to stop hunt somebody who may have been short or long in the US session. So it can be, it can be a stop hunt. They may come down and just go sideways into a consolidation or they may extend a move and continue that leg down that they came through the US session with. Now, when we head, head into the Asian Open, this is the same sort of scenario. They may have extended it down to numbers and then broke out and reversed to stop hunt traders, institutions, algorithms. There might be a lot of different uh, traders that can trade in that 12 candle window because they may not pay the same spreads. They may not have execution costs that I as a retail trader have. So they may be able to position themselves. There may be a lot of institutional volume positioning itself in that window. So the market may often do the same thing into the Asian open. It might do a stop hunt, it may go into consolidation, or it could extend the move again. In that second three hours, prior to the Asian close heading into the Europe open, we'll see the same sort of scenario. If the market has extended out, we might see them stop hunt back up into the move that came down in Asia. So again, one of these three scenarios is always going to happen. So when we have the timings happening, so for example, one of the most common things is if the market has extended out and that extra three hours in Asia, it's gone sideways, often what you will see is a reversal pattern coming out at the end of the Asian session, which is why I talk about sometimes coming to the screen at, at 1 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. But if the market has already been moving, I will look for that consolidation to occur into that London Europe session open. And again, we'll look for possibly a three hour window before the market may give us at the end of that 12 candles, it, it's very common to have a, a, a trade come off of that 12 candle window, either out of the consolidation as a stop hunt or um, a continuation of a move. But it only will occur after it's been in that consolidation. If the market takes off right away and traders are chasing that, they may end up getting up into a move where the market will go into consolidation into that next three hours and we'll see the stop hunt come back prior to the US session open. Or again, they may have gone into consolidation prior to the US open and the US market may extend it out or stop hunt back down or go into consolidation and then reverse. So again, focus on these three scenarios with these three hour rotations. If the market has extended out at the US Open and we're at the high or the low of the session, chances are we're going to see some kind of reversal, stop hunt, consolidation reversal. So it may, be, it may, it may it continue to extend out and pull back and go into the close and not make much of a move. That's usually after a very strongly trending day. But it's important to focus on these three hour rotations because the market will move in three hour rotations. The market may consolidate and then move for three hours. So in London, we might consolidate for three hours and then move for three hours or two hours up and one hour sideways and then two hours back into consolidation, stop hunt reversal, hit the high again in New York open and reverse. Those are the sort of things you want to be thinking of. We'll look at a couple of examples, but again, remember the simple steps and the timings. The timings are very important. A lot of the best trade setups, we say this all the time, happen in that hourly rotation on the 15 minute charts. A lot of the last 15 minute candles or the first 15 minute candles. And often you'll see one of the first candles of the hour show up as a hammer at numbers for a move for 50 or more pips or the reversal. After a consolidation, you'll see the last candle be the trade candle for the move back into the trend or the stop hunt or the reversal or whatever it is. So pay attention to that hourly rotation. It's very critical. Thanks again for all the likes, all the questions, some tremendous feedback. A lot of traders have been getting better and better results every single week. Focus on the long term. Focus on 1% constant progress. If you keep it really simple, you should only be trading at two areas basically, the high, the low, or at numbers. 
If you keep it simple and you have that in your headspace, fight for the best fills, keep your stops tight, hold on to your trades when they're moving in your right direction. Don't be in such a hurry to go to break even. If your trade is right, it's going to hit the target. If you're in a trade for two hours and it's not near your target, reconsider. Close the trade, go to break even, whatever that may be. But in that three hour window, you should be very close to have been got getting your profits. So hopefully that makes sense, traders. Keep the questions coming. Let's both, you and I, keep getting better together. How good can we get? Have a great trading day, and may the markets go with you. Just continuing our discussion, traders, of the timings and the three-hour rotations. If we were to take a look just at a couple of examples to demonstrate this, I've left the color coding on here just to demonstrate the London and the U.S. 12 candle window. So obviously we have our 12 candle rollover where I've mentioned that it's hard to trade often because of the spreads and the whipping around. But you can see as we head into the Asian Open at the 8.30 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time, they 1, 2, 3 to the numbers. That's a stop on on traders that were short. So we talked about one of three scenarios in that three-hour window a stop hunt, an extension out of a move, or a consolidation after a move. So we see that first part of the Asian session move up one, two, three to the numbers, reversing on an engulfment, dropping down and going into a consolidation in the middle of the range before uh, moving down aggressively, stop hunting traders who may have been long, and then going into consolidation again in that 12 candle window at the London Europe rollover and then engulfing we had pins on the bottom engulfment and then a shift up stop hunting traders that were short didn't quite get to the 50 pip area and this is where we talked about again paying attention to how long you're in the trade if you're in that trade for three hours and you still haven't hit your target obviously either taking money off where you're at closing the trade out or making sure that you're a break even this is where that next rollover of three hour window into that 12 candle window can take place. They stop hunt down into the move of traders that were long before pulling back, stop hunting traders who were short and then going into consolidation. The rollover happens again. We call that a stop hunt, an extension of the move, but also a stop hunt and a reversal back up, moving down into a creeping trend with one push into the Asian open, two pushes, three pushes down sideways and classic example of a pin hammer at the numbers at the Europe London crossover session for the stop hunt back up to the high of the previous day. So again, consolidation, stop hunt, one push, two push, dropping down, stop hunting traders that were long on the breakout, consolidating underneath of the numbers and then trending back up through the highs consolidating at the highs of the day. Again, we talk about the changeovers, consolidating at the high, three pins on the high, a hammer, and then reversing the false break reversal all the way back down to the lows of the session. Again, in the session changeover between New York and Asia, we see a stop hunt down on traders that were long into the close, and then a stop hunt back up on traders that were short before consolidating and then breaking through to the next 100 pip box level, one push, two push, one push, two push into the peak, one, two, three, into the high, and we're still in the middle of this range. We'll probably see this market either come down and test that the level with a stop hunt down to the double zeros or continue to trend upwards. But again, the concept I want you to grasp is in that changeover window and in those three hour rotations, how the market will either be consolidating stop hunting, consolidating, and continuing to trend. Extending a move out, stop hunt, consolidation, or trending. Hopefully you got some value out of that today, traders. Just go through your charts, pay attention to the timings. Every three hours, the market will either continue to extend out a move that it's in, it will either go into consolidation. If it's in consolidation, the next possible move is an aggressive move out of that range. Stay disciplined, traders. Stay focused. May the markets go with you. Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. 
If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.